Welcome to Nursing School Explain. In this video on cardiac enzymes or cardiac markers like they are also sometimes called. Now cardiac enzymes are a very very important lab test that we use that helps us in the diagnosis of myocardial infarction or a heart attack. And as a quick review here and I also have a video that goes more into the description of the myocardial infarction into the pathophysiology signs and symptoms and so forth if you're interested. But in an MI there is lack of blood flow or no blood flow to one or more of the coronary arteries. That results first in ischemia, so lack of blood flow. Eventually there will be injury and if there is no intervention then the patient will have a full infarction. And um, cardiac enzymes are proteins released into the bloodstream from the heart muscle itself. And these proteins are basically a cry for help from the heart muscle when it's under duress, when it just does not get enough blood flow to perform the function that it usually would perform. And so it's indicative of injury to muscle cells. So whenever these cardiac enzymes are elevated, we have to pay attention and we really have to treat the patient quickly. Now, the most common or the most important cardiac marker is troponin. And the reason why is because it's cardiac specific. Recall that we have several different muscle tissues in our body, skeletal and cardiac muscle being two of them. And these different cardiac markers are sometimes not as specific, but troponin is the one that is um, only specific to the heart muscle, so cardiac muscle. So therefore, when troponin is elevated, any elevation means that there is something going on with the heart, that it's a cry for help, that this heart is either having injury or an infarction. And then we have to distinguish between CK, which is creatine kinase, and there are three different cardiac markers here, depending on what tissue gives off these enzymes. And CKMM would be more indicative for skeletal muscle, CKBB for brain and nervous tissue, and then CKMB is here more specific for the heart, so many times we look at troponin and the CKMB in conjunction. And then the third enzyme that we look at is myoglobin, and myoglobin actually gets released when there is something going on with heart or skeletal muscle, um, but it's an early indicator of injury or infarction. So myoglobin will be one of those enzymes that gets elevated the first. So if the patient comes in right away after they start having some symptoms and only the myoglobin is indicated, it does not mean that there's nothing going on with the heart muscle, um, but it's an early indicator. So many times we will keep the patient, of course we'll check an EKG, see if there's a STEMI or a non-STEMI going on, and then determine um, how soon after this first set of cardiac enzymes we might need to measure or draw another set. Um, myoglobin here again is non-specific, so it could be hard to scale the muscle, but it's an early indicator, so if it's elevated, most likely we'll have to draw some repeat enzymes to see how the trends are going. And over here we have a graph and then a table as to the onset peak and duration for the different cardiac markers. So the most important one, troponin here in red again, um, gets elevated after four to six hours of injury to that cardiac muscle. The peak is at 10 to 24 hours, but it lasts 10 to 14 days. So that can be elevated quite some time. So if we look at the graph here, so it starts kind of more um, at, a, at a steep incline and then kind of drops off at a more flat curve. And you can see here that these are hours and over here are days. So this really could be up to two weeks elevated. So what, what is important to note here, because it has such a long duration, if your patient has been hospitalized or has had an MI in the last 14 days, their cardiac markers will remain elevated. But remember that we have to always trend the lab value. So then we have to see, well, what was it previously? Is it no more elevated than it was before? Or is it actually slowly coming down like it would be here shown in this graph? And then CKMB is the, um, the blue line here. So the onset of elevation is three to six hours. It peaks at 10 to 24 and lasts, I'm um, sorry, 12 to 24 and then lasts about 12 to 48 hours. 
and this won't be as elevated and again here's the graph that corresponds with that. And then myoglobin here, remember I said that it's an early indicator of injury or infarction. So if the patient comes in shortly after they start having symptoms, only the myoglobin will be elevated. If they come in, let's say two hours after the symptoms started, we won't see any of the CKMB or the troponin elevated, but the myoglobin might be elevated because it starts as soon as two hours after the injury occurs. And so it peaks at three to 15 hours and is very short lived for about 24 hours. Um, and so that's when the patient comes in and, and they come here at hour two and we only see myoglobin elevated, then we'll have to wait and draw the enzymes at a later, so maybe four hours later or three hours later, which will then be at hour five or six. And then we might see an increase in these other two, the troponin and the CKMB already and then determine what needs to happen for a course of action here. So thank you for watching this video on cardiac enzymes. I have a lot of other videos that pertain to myocardial infarction um, because the topic of myocardial infarction is so important because one of the major global causes of mortality and morbidity is cardiovascular disease, which in turn or when it gets really bad can lead to myocardial infarction. So please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and I'll see you soon right here on Nursing School Explained. Thanks for watching.